we're going to look at how to find the orders of a reactant in the rate law graphically, which is still using experimental data, and how to use something called the integrated rate law. Now, if you want to see more in depth about how an integrated rate law is derived, um, you can take time to look at your textbook or something like that. I don't really find that super important in this chapter, so I'm just going to talk about the significance of the integrated rate laws. So for a zero order reaction, here's the integrated rate law. Um, and really the importance of this is that this fits the y equals mx plus b form. So essentially, if you have a zero order reaction, um, when you plot the data of concentration at a certain time on your y axis, and you plot that versus time on your x axis, you should get a straight line if the reaction is zero order with respect to reactant A. If it's not zero order, then it won't fit this integrated rate law, so you're not going to get a linear or straight line. The slope of the line would give you negative k, and the y-intercept would give you the concentration at time zero, which makes sense if you're graphing concentration over time. So really the takeaway is just that if you have a reaction that's zero order with respect to a certain reactant, a graph of the concentration versus time will give you a linear straight line. It makes sense that this line would be decreasing because the concentration of the reactant over time should decrease as it's getting, getting used up in the reaction. By negating the slope, um, I would get k as a positive number because we want our rate constants to be positive numbers. They can be big if it's a fast rate or small if it's a slow rate, but k should be positive. Okay. If I do the same thing with my first order um, integrated rate law, I get something that looks like this. This is how it appears on the AP formula sheet under kinetics. Uh, it's not quite yet in y equals mx plus b format, but with a little bit of a nudge of bringing this term to the other side. Here it is in y equals mx plus b format. So what would I graph that would tell me if I have a first order reaction? Well, if I graph the natural log of the concentration at a certain time um, versus time, and I get a straight line, then that is first order with respect to reactant A. Um, the slope gives me negative K again. The y-intercept in this case would give me the natural log of the concentration at time zero. And a lot of times you'll be given reactions that might just have one reactant. If you have more than one reactant, you would have to make a plot for each reactant to determine the order of that particular reactant. Okay. Um, and so really the takeaway here is if you get a natural log of concentration versus time graph and you get a straight line, then the reaction's first order with respect to reactant A. And again, if concentration goes down over time, it makes sense that the natural log of it will also go down during time. Um, over time, by taking the negative slope, um, I can get k as a positive number. And lastly, for second order, here's the integrated rate law. I can find it on my formula sheet. Again, with a little bit of a nudge, bringing this to the other side, I can get my um, y equals mx plus b format. And I see if I were to graph 1 over the concentration versus time, um, this would fit a linear line or a straight line if it's a second order process, if the reaction is second order with respect to the concentration of A. In this case, the slope would give me K, and the y-intercept would be 1 over the initial concentration. So again, the takeaway is if I plot 1 over concentration versus time, and I get a straight line or a linear line, then it fits a linear uh, trend line, then I have a second order process with respect to A. And it makes sense if concentration goes down over time for a reactant, that one over it would go up over time. And in this case, the slope is going to be a positive number, and that will just be your rate constant K. Don't forget your rate constant is not just magnitude, it also has units, and those units will depend on what the order is. Okay, so um, on your formula sheet, you, on the AP exam, you do have first and second order integrated rate laws if you need them. Um, but really the takeaway here is this kinetic plot, knowing which plot indicates um, is the characteristic plot or the kinetic plot, we call it, um, for zero first and second order. Um, again, also as a note for gases, instead of using concentration, sometimes they plot partial pressures, um, and we can use those 
to be essentially directly proportional to the concentration, so you can use the same type of data. Um, rather than concentration versus time, it's partial pressure of A versus time, ln of partial pressure of A versus time, 1 over partial pressure of A versus time. And notice that you'll have different units. Um, if you're doing a short answer or a free response question, just make sure you don't always just write A, um, that you would sub in what the actual reactant is. So if your reactant's NO2, you would want a plot of natural log of NO2, not natural log of A, if there's no A in the reaction. Um, so what might you see? You could see graphs made, um, and here's a graph of concentration versus time for a given reactant, um, they, then uh, natural log versus time, and one over concentration versus time. Um, and what is the order of this reaction? Notice only one of the plots is really going to fit a straight line best. In this case, natural log of A versus time fits a straight line best, so this would be first order reaction. And from this characteristic plot of first order, I can also find the slope, um, and that would give me the rate constant. Okay, here's a different set. Okay, where's my straight line? Here it is, concentration versus times the straight line, so this would be a zero order reaction. Okay, here's those three characteristic plots, and notice this data best fits one, um, one over A versus time, which is a characteristic plot for second order. So it's a really easy way of graphically determining what is your uh, order of reaction, order with respect to a certain reactant. And as I said, for gases, sometimes rather than concentration versus time, you might see pressure versus time, a natural log of pressure versus time, and you can still use the same um, technique. So, okay, here's natural log versus time. That's my straight line, so it's going to be first order. And then if they ask me for the rate constant, um, I can just essentially pick two points that fall on my best fit curve um, and find the rise over run. In this case, okay, my rise is going 5 to 4, um, my run is going uh, 0 to 20,000, and I get, um, as my slope, it's a negative slope, we'll change it to be positive, I get 5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then don't forget, I need units for the rate constant. If this is first order, then my units should be s to the minus 1 power. And if you need um, help figuring out what those units should be, you can see one of my other videos about finding the rate law um, with experimental data. Uh, the last thing you might be asked to do is use the integrated rate law to solve for um, a given problem. And these are actually pretty simple to do. It's just that a lot of people forget that these integrated rate laws exist, um, and they are in your formula sheet, on your AP formula sheet, for first and second order. They don't list zero order, so presumably you would not have to, um, you wouldn't be getting a zero order problem. So if I look at this, it says consider the first order decomposition of N2O5, and it gives me the rate constant K, um, gives me a reaction, and it tells me if the initial concentration of N2O5 is 0.2 molar, what's the concentration of N2O5 after 6 minutes? And if I go to my formula sheet, I can find the first order integrated rate law, which looks like this. I don't have to memorize it, it's right there for me, it's just that um, a lot of people forget it exists. And I can plug into this. If I know um, all but one variable in this equation, I can solve for what's missing. So if I know the concentration um, at a certain time initially, and I know the time, I can solve for k. Or any missing any other variable, I can solve for it. So for a, essentially they want to know the concentration of N2O5 after 6 minutes. Once I find my integrated rate law, I like to sub in for A whatever um, the reaction is first order with respect to. So it tells me first order with respect to N2O5. And this will just help me ensure that I'm using concentrations of N2O5. The reason why I do this is sometimes they change it up. And rather than giving you concentrations of N2O5, they might give you concentrations of something else in the reaction. And then I might have to use stoichiometry to turn it into N2O5. So in this case, there's no tricks here. They give me the initial concentration of N2O5. Um, that would go here. They give me the time is 6 minutes. That would go for T. They give me the rate constant K, 0.35 minutes to the minus 1. And I can solve for the concentration of N2O5 after 6 minutes. So if I plug in, I'll notice that units of minutes cancel out. Okay, I'll get left with something like this. 
and um, if I'm trying to isolate or get rid of a natural log, it's going to be similar to regular logs. Logs are base, L-O-G log is base 10, L-N is base E. So if this were regular logs, um, to get rid of it, I would take 10 to the um, each of these sides. But since it's natural log, to get rid of the LN, I can do E to the LN. And that would get rid of, essentially, this term. It would bring down the N205. And in my calculator, I can do E to the negative 3.71, and I get 0.024 molarity. And it should make sense that my concentration should be lower than it was initially after six minutes. You can do this integrated rate law. You can use that for any um, radioactive decay problem as well. You don't have to go through using um, any other type of decay equation. You can plug in right here because radioactive decay is first order. If you know a concentration, initial and final, um, you can solve for the time that went through, uh, as long as you know the rate constant, so on and so forth. So you can use this. Okay, if I look at B, how long does it take for the concentration of N2O5 to drop from 0.2 molar to 0.15 molar? Again, I can use my integrated rate law. I like to plug in for the concentration of what I know is first order, N2O5, just to make sure I have the right thing. And they are talking about N2O5. So if I plug in, okay, concentration at time T um, is 0.15, concentration initially is 0.2, I know my K, it's in the problem statement, and I can solve for T, and I should get 0.82 minutes. If you look at part C here, this is why I say I like to plug in with the thing that it says it's first order with respect to, because if you notice in here, I need concentrations of N2O5. They give me the initial concentration of N2O5, but then they want to know um, how long it takes for the concentration of NO2 to reach 2 molar. The reaction's not first order with respect to NO2. First of all, it's not even a reactant. It's a product. So in order to plug in to this integrated rate law, I need to change um, the concentration of NO2 um, into the how much N2O5 remains at that time. So I can just use stoichiometry. Okay, um, so I'm, if I'm starting with, or if I have 2 molar NO2 that was made, uh, I notice that there's a 1 to 2 ratio here, so I can use that to change NO2 molarity into N2O5. But is that how much N2O5 remains, or is that how much is used up? Well, this is how much product I have. 2 molar is a product that was made. This, um, this stoichiometry would give me how much N2O5 is used up. That's not what's in the integrated rate law. This is how much is remaining at a certain time, how much is there after a certain number of minutes. So in this case, I want to make sure um, that I figure out how much remains. So if I look in the problem, if I initially have four and one molar is used up, then I'm going to have three molar N2O5 remaining. And that's where you might see a little trick with this. You might have to do a little stoichiometry before plugging into the integrated rate law. And this is the most complicated um, of the examples that you would kind of see. Now I can plug in. I plug in my 3 molar for how much N2O5 remains at the time. Here's my rate constant. Um, I'm solving for T. And here's my initial concentration. And I get actually um, the same exact time as I did for part B. So that's how you can use the integrated rate law in a problem, and that's how the integrated rate law was used to figure out um, how to find the orders of a reaction um, graphically, which is really, again, just using experimental data because the rate law and the orders with respect to each reactant have to be figured out experimentally.